Blog Talk Radio. Uh, Kundalini, once again, for those who are just joining us and who may not be familiar with the Kundalini itself, it is an energetic uh, stream of energy that is intelligent. It has its own consciousness. And it resides in the last three vertebrae of the, of the tailbone of the human being. When it is awakened, this energetic consciousness will will erupt from that tailbone area into the lower spine and and stream up the spine exiting out the top of the head as as one would see a fountain. So uh, you can kind of see the human spine as being a a fountain, you know, and the and the source of that energetic fountain is down there at the uh last three vertebrae of the tailbone. And it extends, you know, these these activation points extend down to the soles of the feet, pulling energy from the earth. When this occurs, uh, a person's neurosystem, physical neurosystem, can go into a very strong convulsion. And the back can arch and and various... uh, uh, fantastic phenomena can be experienced, everything from visions to to clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, uh, oneness with all creation, oneness with God. Uh, this is an extreme event, and uh, this is the gateway towards a new a new evolutionary point within the human being in in, in our bodies are wired to have this. This is natural to our human system. You know, even though our science at this point does not understand it, it is still natural to our system, and science will eventually catch up to this. Uh, you know, and hopefully, you know, we're adding to to that possibility or to that probability with these broadcasts. As the energy uh, makes its way uh, up the spine and out the fontanelle at the top of the head. It's also yes, yes. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I would like to thank uh, David. Uh, and David, is, this is David Sullivan. I would like to to thank him for making us aware that uh, Blog Talk Radio is having difficulties. So here we go. When the kundalini is awakened in a person or activated in a person, uh, the kundalini is is a very, very powerful source of energy that is located uh, in a a triangle, basically between the, 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 the bottoms of the feet, the chakras on the foot, and the last three vertebrae in the tailbone. Uh, this is uh, this has been symbolized by the ancients as a serpent wrapped three and a half times around an egg, and this egg and the serpent would be at the uh, within the last three vertebrae of the tailbone in the human being. When this is activated and awakened, the Kundalini shoots up the spine as an energetic force shooting up the spine, and it emits out the top of the head. Uh, where the fontanelle is, and, and surprisingly enough, it it literally fountains out of the fontanelle of the human being. And as this occurs, you know, a whole new level of energetic interaction uh, occurs upon the body. And the and during this type of a spinal sweep of energy, the uh, you know the muscles will can, will respond to this, and you'll have many different contractions and and many different movements you know, during this this initial event. Uh, your you know the back will arch and and uh, the legs will will shake and 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 sometimes twist and and it's not painful at all. It actually feels very very good. It it, it is beyond good, and it's beyond I think what human beings can can. Uh, process using words as a communication form. It's it's beyond words. So as this occurs, uh, a whole system of trans transformation is being given uh, into the person. And 
part of this transformation, one aspect of it, is the Kriya phenomenon. And this Kriya phenomena is the infusion of the energetic Kundalini upon the neural systems and the muscular systems and all of the motor systems of the human body. Uh, but it also goes beyond the human body. It goes straight into the emotional body and into the mental body and into the psychological body. The spiritual body, it really won't do too much with. Okay? And I have to say that... Uh, here at this place where I'm broadcasting from is an is an animal rescue, and uh, you'll hear you know some of the birds and some of the some of the uh, fellow mortals that uh, have been rescued and are being taken care of here at uh, at the place where I'm broadcasting from in Santa Rosa. So if you hear that in the background, which I assume you do, that that would be Niki, a cockatoo from Australia. Anyway. So as as the kriya occurs upon the system, the human body, the physical body, will respond to it uh, by by ways of going into to certain yoga positions, and it doesn't have to necessarily be of a yoga, you know, a certain type of yoga. But I will suggest to you that that all yogas emanate from people observing other people having kundalini kriyas. And so with that in mind, you can, re- you can kind of see the source of, of yoga on this world. Kundalini comes into the body and it will twist and torque the body into very specific positions. It will force the person to hold that position whether they are conscious in their body or not. And I mention that because it, many of these kriyas will happen while a person is sleeping. They will wake up next to their spouse in bed uh, inside of a yoga position having never been introduced to yoga. And this will happen over and over and over and over. And even in their in their waking conscious moments, they will find themselves assuming certain yogic positions, and you'll see a lot of these positions uh, repeated in the kundalini yoga format. Um, they'll wake up and they'll, or, or, or they'll just be compelled to assume a certain yoga position and hold it and breathe. And if they resist it or try not to do it, uh, it can be painful. And so as you don't resist and as you as you surrender to this, to this compelling force within you, you know, it feels very good. It feels uh, quite blissful, in, in fact. And so many of these positions also don't resemble yoga. Sometimes a person is shaking. Their hands are shaking or their legs are shaking or their their body is torqued one way or the other in a very, very... Uh, strong and almost mechanical way. And once again, you just want to, to realize this is a kundalini kriya. Nothing is wrong. You are not having a convulsion. You are not having a seizure. You are not going to bite your tongue or swallow your tongue. This is not a medical condition. I want to be very clear with that. This is not a medical condition, but anybody seeing it without knowing what's going on, will assume that it is a medical condition. And, uh, you know, they will they will seek out the various uh, treatments that the uh, medical community has to, to give, and typically an anti-seizure medication. But you don't need. All you need to do is to match your symptoms of kundalini awakening uh, with the many, many, uh, you know, certainly on the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com site, you know, we have a list of, of symptoms that a person can can access and compare their symptoms to, to to realize that oh yes indeed I'm having a Kundalini experience and therefore these positions that I find myself in these Kundalini kriyas that are coming to me are natural to me and they and and it's helping me, and it, this is helpful. This is a good thing. And it is a good thing, and it is a transient thing, typically. Not all the time, 
for some people, their karma or their development requires that the kundalini kriyas last longer. And for some people, it, it requires them to to have it for a very long period of time to the point where the kriya itself goes from an actual physical uh, positioning, automatic positioning, to an energetic electrical force within the body. And I've had these. And these will literally propel you across the room. So, for instance, you'll be sitting in a chair, you'll be doing some meditation, and all of a sudden you get kind of touched with about a 10,000-volt feeling, you know, at the base of your spine or on your back, and, and your muscles will contract so hard that it can it can literally toss you across the room. And, and uh, it, this is quite surprising. It does not damage you. It does not damage you. And it isn't electricity per se, even though it feels like electricity. These are, these are referred to, not surprisingly, as electrical kriyas. But they are, they are not so much electrical, even though they, they have that feeling on the body. The kriyas come to a person uh, in order to spread the cellular transformation upon the person through the kundalini. So the kundalini energy comes into every cell of the body, and yet it does it in such a pattern and such a way uh, that, first of all, the pattern and the way will be unique to the individual. The pattern and the way will follow uh, levels of karma that the person uh, having this is, is subjected to. And so each person's path within the Kriya phenomena will be different. So, for instance, if, uh, if, if person A is having Kriyas where the, where the legs uh, cross each other and, and, and hyperflex the ankle, well, person B will have, uh, you know, back arches occurring. Okay, so this is what I mean. It, it, the pathway of the Kriya in an individual is different. And... Within that context, I want you to understand that everybody is different within the kundalini. And as you have your kundalini, uh, as you initiate your kundalini journey, don't, don't tr try to be, don't ex have the expectation that your journey is going to be exactly the same as somebody else's because it will not. Everybody comes to this table with different karma and different karmic requirements. And those kriyas will work will reflect uh, those differences in karma. So as, as, as these kriyas come through the body and you start assuming different positions, you'll notice that your, your forefinger and your tip and your thumb tip will come into the Gyan Mudra quite often. You'll notice that your tongue tip will go up behind the upper front teeth. Uh, you'll notice that your eyes will want to go up, up, up. Uh, almost to the point to where only the whites of your eyes are showing. You'll find yourself breathing in different patterns of breathing. You'll find yourself, uh, once again, assuming different uh, physical positions. Uh, shaking sometimes is normal. This is all normal stuff. Uh, assuming yoga positions, normal things. Um, don't be afraid when this occurs. I want to reiterate, nothing is wrong with you. This is natural. It is part of the kundalini process upon your system, upon your physical system. At the same time that your body goes through the different physical contortions uh, and positioning uh, from a physical kriya, your emotional body will also be going through its different positions of a kundalini nature. So, with the emotional body, your mood swings can become extremely enhanced, okay? You'll go from happy to sad for absolutely no reason. You'll go from happy to sad to dull to the, to the various positions of, of uh, emotional gradation that your emotional spectrum gives for you to pull from. So happy, sad, angry joyful, loving, 
all of the different issues of an emotional quality can be brought to the surface during these emotional kriyas. Uh, you'll be crying for absolutely no reason. And as I've discussed in some of the other broadcasts, crying is a natural uh, event within a kundalini awakening. Crying is a release valve for tremendous amounts of energy flowing through the person. So let yourself cry. Let yourself weep copiously. Let the tears flow. It is absolutely crucial that you allow yourself to do this. Uh, do not let your ego interfere with these tears. Now, I understand that you have to go to work. You have to, to you know, have a, a, a normal, uh, consistent uh, um, attitude with your children and with your family and with other people that may not be having the kundalini and may not understand why all of a sudden mommy or daddy or brother or sister are, are weeping copious amounts of tears. And in that scenario, I want you to communicate with your kundalini as if you're communicating to another person. Say, kundalini in me, I cannot be crying during work or when I'm getting the kids ready to go to school. I will give you the rest of the day to do this and my nights to do this, but when I am at work or when I'm dealing with my family, please allow me to finish those tasks first. And then then I, I completely surrender to this transformation that you're giving to me. This is a very, very, very real agreement, and the kundalini typically will keep its end of the bargain. So you must keep your end of the bargain. Okay. Uh, these kriyas will come, and, and I don't know anybody that has a job. Well, there are some people that have jobs that, you know, it's okay to have kriyas during that work, but for the most part, for the majority of the population, whether you're a, a, an English teacher or a massage therapist or a, a, a waiter, a driver, a manager, an owner of a company, an airline pilot, you know, any of the of the many different vocations that 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 we as humans partake of, most of them will not make room for Krius to occur. And so it's very, very important that you begin right off the bat to have that conversation with your Kundalini. Treat it like an individual because it is an individual within you. It is a divine consciousness within you. And the agenda of this divine consciousness within you, the seed of divinity within you, is to transform your body into a, the, the flesh made divine, into a divine uh, human being, uh, as, as another uh, person put it, uh, homo luminosus, okay, the, the humanity of light. So I really, really encourage you to develop that uh, that uh, communication with the Kundalini. It's very, very important uh, for your process during these kriyas. These kriyas, uh, for the most part, will last about four months. But as I said, everybody is different. You know, I'm just looking at the averages. Uh, for people that are having kriyas. I, I know one person that's been having kriyas for years. I know another person that just had a very few amount of kriyas and they and they went, you know, into the next phase of, of kundalini expression. So, the you know, how long this manifests for you, once again, will depend upon your karma and also your levels of resistance. If you keep resisting the kriyas, the kriyas will stay longer. The, the the greater your surrender or your agreement uh, to having the kriyas come through you, uh, they will pass as as they as quickly as they should pass through your system. Okay, uh, so so realize that the kriya phenomena can be transient for you. You don't have to worry about oh my god I'm going to have these spontaneous movements for the rest of my life. That's not going to work. This is not for the rest of your life. This is for, you know, often, you know, I'll say four months to six months of Kriya activity. And some of it can be quite severe. Uh, I have videos of people having Kriyas and, 
And it looks quite strange to the uneducated onlooker. It, it really does. And uh, if you are having Kundalini, and if you are having uh, the Kriya phenomena, if you have a spouse, I will definitely ask you to let the spouse listen to this to this program. Uh, they need to know that they don't need to dial 911 or any emergency service. Uh, that nothing is wrong with you, the person having the Kriyas. It is, it is just a phase that a person goes through during the Kundalini awakening process. And yet, this phase, you know, when, when, a, when an average person looks at it and goes, oh my gosh, they're having seizures on the floor, call 911. This happens a lot. This, this is very common. And I, you know, part of the reason I wanted to have this show, and I might, I might want to cover some more of this next week because it's very important that people know this is not an emergency situation. Once again, you will not swallow your tongue. You are not having a seizure. Okay, you will not hyperventilate unless you do it from fear. And what I'm telling you is, there is no need to fear this. This is not a disease. You're not having a neurological trauma at all. As a matter of fact, you're probably in a very healthy physical state to even have the grace of the Kundalini come to you. So once again, this is not an emergency medical situation. Now, if you want to go to the ER, then I suggest you do. You go to the ER and they will give you the anti uh, you know the 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 medications that that uh, keep you from going into seizures, the anti seizure medication. Uh, typically, it will be quite strong, and you'll be in zombie land for a while. Um, but what I am suggesting to you, and to those of you that are having creas and may be in zombie land, I will suggest that you don't need uh, anti spasmodics or anti seizure medication. You're not having seizures. You're not having petty mal or grand mal seizures. This, this is part of the kundalini awakening process. So once again, you're going to need to match up your symptoms with the symptoms of kundalini awakening. Find a healthcare provider that knows about kundalini. They're not common, I have to admit. Uh, most, you know, 95, 99% of the medical staff do not know what kundalini is, and therefore they have no other reference for it other than than you know seizures, and so they will treat you to the best of their ability for seizures. And so, you know, kind of be advised. Uh, look on the web, and, and don't just depend on my information. I'm one person. Go look at other information, and 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 see what feels right for you. I am going to suggest for those of you that have Kundalini phenomena. Well, you have kundalini activated or awakened within your bodies. And that, you know, from four to six months of a typical uh, journey through the, the kundalini plat- platform of kriyas, you will have automatic, spontaneous uh, positioning of your physical body and your emotional body without your permission. You don't get to have choice in this. Kundalini takes over that choice unless you talk with it, unless you you develop that bond of communication, which is easy. That is as easy as talking to someone on the telephone or talking to yourself. And, and, you know, I, I don't suggest you go around telling people, yeah, I'm having a conversation with my Kundalini to, you know, slow down the, the Kriya activity, unless those people that you're talking with know about kundalini know that you know there there's nothing that needs to be cured you don't need to go to a healer you don't need to go to an acupuncturist you don't need to go to a to any kind of a health care provider you need to just let it take its course let it take its course don't resist it don't feel that you're sick you're not sick you know and allow it to take its course. It will it will disappear, you know, four to six months typically disappears. If it lasts longer, nothing is wrong. It just means that your personal process requires your Kriyas to last longer. 
I've known people, as I mentioned before, that have had Prius for years and years. And one guy is having them for eight years, and these are the electrical Prius. And that can be quite disruptive. The emotional Prius can last longer than the uh, the automatic uh, uh, positioning Prius uh, with the physical body. So, you know, you're you're not having a psychological problem. You don't need to see a therapist. But if you want to, go see a therapist. You know, go go see what helps you to become uh, at ease with this, to to reduce the levels of fear that you have about this. Um, you know, I'm open to, to any of you uh, talking about these Kundalini Kriyas. I, you know, I don't want you to suffer with fear. Most of this uh, Kriya phenomena is terrifying because your choice has been has been abrogated. Your choice has been taken away. And it's been taken away by an unknown force within you. And we typically will go into a fear, a fear zone. When we, when our choice is taken away by an unknown force, that's typically, you know, that's what diseases do. They, they force themselves on you and they take away your choice of, of good health. Well, this is not occurring. A disease is not occurring with this. You are not diseased. You are actually being blessed with the Kundalini. And as you go through the different uh, body positionings that uh, that the Kundalini brings to you, including the shaking and the twitching and the the you know the eyes going up and the tongue going up and the fingers going into different mudras and standing on one foot and stretching out your legs this way and that and arching your spine this way and that, twisting, torquing, doing all the different uh, positions that the body will do, uh, this is natural. This is natural to the human condition. It's just you have to understand that we are not finished evolving. And Kundalini is part of that evolution. It is a big part of the next stage of evolution that the human species is going to go through. And everybody will reach this state, perhaps not in this lifetime, and I'm sorry to insinuate the whole idea of reincarnation, but it, it, is, a, it, is, a, it is a fact, uh, whether science can find agreement with that or not. Uh, eventually they will. So, uh, with that in mind... Allow these Kriyas to occur. Now, I've spoken with you a bit about the physical positions, and once again, you can uh, you can look into the Kundalini Yoga uh, body positions. What happened with the yoga and everything is that uh, people wanted to have Kundalini back you know, about eight thousand years ago, when the Sanskriti culture in India. Uh, Kundalini was was sought after by by uh, many members of that of that society, and they wanted to know how to get it, whether they were ready for it or not. They wanted to they wanted that oneness with creation, and and of course, everything on Earth is really all creatures on Earth are are very very uh, desirous of having uh, the divine connection, and so. They watched people having kundalini, and they they took notes. They said, okay, well, okay, he's he's spreading his legs open, he's holding his big toe, and he's breathing in a certain pattern. Okay, we're writing this down. Uh, In order to get kundalini, you have to do this, 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 and that. And they went through, you know, many, many, many different postures and automatic positioning that the Kriya phenomena offered for them to, to observe. And they... They made the the uh, the decision that well, if we do these kriyas, then we're going to have kundalini, and so this will awaken our kundalini. And so this was was one of the formats that uh, the early peoples were using to try to awaken the kundalini. Now, you know, probably not the most accurate format, but then again, you know, I mean, it's trial and error, and so. You can't fault them for trying, and 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 frankly, it's a it's a helpful practice as well. Kundalini yoga, I feel, is very helpful. 
some of their devotional targets, uh, you know, past teachers and whatnot, uh, that's not necessary. But it's not hurtful either. Devotion and Kundalini go very well together. Uh, typically, they, they'll they worship a, a dead teacher, uh, and that's fine. That's fine. That way, you know, you don't have to interact with a living one. Um, often, they have living ones, too. And, and so with, I'm, what I'm suggesting within the Kundalini Kriya understanding, uh, you don't have to have a teacher. The teacher is the Kundalini within you. It will teach you what positions you need to assume, how long you need to assume them, what breathing needs to be needs to go along with it, and basically it will give you intuitive guidance. So really pay attention to your feelings while you're having these kriyas. Let these kriyas take priority on the decision-making process. Put your ego aside for a while. Let the tears flow. Let the body positions go. And don't get in the way of your evolution. Now, the mental mind will also have its kriyas. Uh, some of these kriyas can be seen as extreme dullness. You'll just, gosh, you won't remember your last name. Uh, you know, your telephone number, what's that? What's, you know. <laughs> It's not quite as bad as that, but sometimes it can be. You extreme levels of dullness. And then to the other end of the spectrum, extreme levels of amazing intellectual prowess. To the really to the point of brilliance. Uh, you'll just you will just know. You'll know things that you shouldn't know because you haven't studied it. So you you will have information levels that are extreme. Uh, and the, this mental functioning, you know, you'll, you'll want the extreme levels to continue and you won't want the dullness. But what the, what the Kundalini is actually doing within this paradigm, within the mental body paradigm, is that it's expanding the spectrum of mental experience. It's expanding it. So you're not, you're not, uh, um, you know far beyond what you uh, what you've studied, or what you've been programmed to know, or what you've been taught your whole life. Uh, you're tied into a new sequence of, of of gaining information, and knowingness comes naturally to you. Uh, it is not. Uh, it won't conform to your ego desires. Uh, so you won't be able to know, uh, oh, okay, which which uh, slot machine do I put my, my money in so that I can win? Uh, on the one hand, and on, on the other hand, it will, you know. And, but that won't be the, the Kriya so much speaking. That would be the actual consciousness of the Kundalini speaking to you. Uh, the mental Kriyas, they're shorter lived than than, say, the emotional or the physical kriyas. Uh, it is understood that in, in, in your life, in the Western societies, you have to use your mental mind quite a bit. And it, it, it may be dull for you while you're sleeping or while you're just laying around the house, but when you get behind the wheel, it is understood that if you continue to have such mental dullness behind the wheel, it could kill you and other people. And that is not within the evolutionary uh, expression of the kundalini it is not anti life so so you'll you'll sharpen up so that you can so that you can drive or so that you can do your job so that you can get the kids ready for school you know make their lunches you know get them dressed whatever uh so don't worry about that but the mental kriyas do occur and they come in spikes you'll have peaks and valleys of that as well as the uh as the uh, emotional kriyas. The emotional kriyas can be a little more dangerous because all of a sudden you're just going off on people that under similar circumstances you would never go off on. I want you to be a, I want you to be aware of that. Um, somebody can say something to you that will just really, really irritate you. And whereas before you may have just laughed it off or whatever, but now because you're having this emotional kriya, it can become super, super sensitive. And I would you know, just 
realize that this is Kundalini. This is Kundalini. Take a few breaths through your nose, just your nose, you know. Really, really understand and let it go. Let it go. The Kundalini will also help you let this go. But you have to go into this within certain activities of of uh, of choosing to let this go. Uh, just as it will with anger or irritation, it will amplify love. Extreme love will occur to you. You will fall into convulsions of love. Uh, you will see the the slightest action of a of a loving or or a, or a kind gesture from one person to another, and this will bring you into tears of love. And this can elevate into bliss. And with bliss, once again, your choice is taken away, and you are you are consumed with heaving, loving, blissful expressions of joy and love, and your tears once again are just pouring from your eyes, and and you may be crying, sobbing with joy. This is what happens to me, and it, you know, it, it, once again, it, you know, this this area goes way beyond words. Way beyond words. So, uh, the the blissful kriya is something that really doesn't go away. That part of it will stay with you because it is part of the new spectrum of your new uh, human experience. You know, your homo luminosus experience. This this new ev- evolution that you are a part of now. You know, the, the the bliss is is kind of a permanent fixture. At least I have found that for myself, and I've seen it in other people as well. Okay, some people because of their karma or where they did, they won't have that as much, or it may be just a transient phenomena. But for others, it it just goes on and on and on and on and on, and and still on for others, it goes into ecstatic bliss where you don't even remember what you were doing when you're having ecstatic bliss. I mean, you just you just have, you know, first of all, you don't have a choice. And so the ecstatic bliss comes and you're walking with it. It's like, for instance, when I'm giving a seminar, sometimes I, I go in straight into ecstasy when I'm giving a certain level of information that <laughs> I have to warn people that this may occur, because I've learned the hard way. Uh, it occurs when the kundalini really is is happy with, with uh, uh, the information that I'm giving, and then what happens is, is I just kind of blank out, and I don't remember where I'm at, and I, I know that I can still stand, but the the tears are flowing, the body's heaving, and the love is just expanding out from from my body and from my being into the people that are there, and then when it stops, uh, you know, I, I have an assistant kind of. <laughs> Remind me what I was doing, what I was saying, and where I was going with it, and and uh, so, yeah, yeah, that that's part of the that is part of the Kundalini Kriya platform. Uh, do we have any callers with any questions, uh, uh, Sitara? Sitara, I'm gonna put you on here. There you are. Can you hear me, Santara? Oh. oh, one second. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Do we have other? Do we have any callers? We have one caller on the line. Yes, and David, can you hang on two seconds and I connect you? Uh, well. Uh, oh. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Well, I mean. You know, I can see that that not everybody is is going to agree with what I have to say. Okay, um, D- David is online now, Chris. Hi, Hello, hi, David. David. Hi, Chris. Hi, David. So you don't like ten percent of what I'm saying? No, I no, I like everything you are saying. It, there's just an addition. There, there's a caveat, a footnote, a side note. Okay. That must be that must be interjected. 
okay. that yes, while the Kundalini awakening process is a natural process and that you mustn't go into fear and lose sight of, uh, um, that you mustn't succumb to fear and get into panic and uh, start taking medications or anything like that. Very often the symptoms can even be misinterpreted by doctors. So you have to be very conscious of that when you're dealing with any medical professionals. But at the same time, uh, many people don't have their their body state may not be in a in a position to handle the energies until uh, um, or while they're while they're happening, and they do need outside support, as in going to an acupuncturist or going to a doctor. I myself had four heart attacks while I went through my kundalini awakening. This is okay. I dealt with it, but if I hadn't on the um if I hadn't learned from having been exposed to the medical profession who they said, "Oh yeah, you've got an erratic heart rate," but we they did they they the western doctors in our in the city I was in were not very helpful, and I ended up uh, uh, doing self reiki and calling upon the master realm and calming myself and breathing through it, and then on the way when I left the hospital, I started to run, and I got my heart rhythm back in in its right function by pro- by processing it myself. And the next two heart attacks, I did the same thing, and I was okay. Uh, yeah, the fourth I'll, one. I'll, I'll... The fourth, the fourth one, though, the fourth one, though, I crawled on my hands and knees to my acupuncturist, who's actually a really powerful healer in other other ways as well. But when I crawled into her clinic, I was in a full blown heart attack. I was dying, and if I hadn't had outside intervention, I would not be here to tell you this. Well, I agree that to some degree, people do need to have outside intervention, and I do counsel people right. that if they need. If they need to go to the ER, then they go to the ER. I'm okay, fairly so that's, that's, I'm fairly, that's just it. I'm I think because the show was rushed because of the uh, technical difficulties or something, th- yeah. you didn't say that. <laughs> you were ah. stressing, you, you, you stressed very clearly that they shouldn't go to an ER, <laughs> that they shouldn't no. panic and go to an ER. Well, they, they're not, not for the Kriyas, but no, I agree. I agree that, and you know, I was talking, you know, when the first one, the show first started, <laughs> I was talking for a good ten minutes, and I guess nobody was hearing anything. And I did, I did say that. So thank you, thank you for oh, that. Oh, there you go. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. It's because so I knew started, it was an ac- I knew it was an accident. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. First yeah. of all, you know, I'm not in a position to tell people not to go to the ER uh, for medical conditions. What I'm saying, what I'm suggesting, is kriyas are not medical conditions. They are, they are kundalini conditions. But they look like a medical condition, and 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 I and I agree with you. I think that people yeah. should go to an ER if they feel that they need to. So, for for instance, let's, let's take your situation. Although I strongly suggest that everybody has a good relationship already with an acupuncture trained healer, who they can go yeah. to, who's the, who they have a good relationship with to the extent that they can show up as an emergency. Yeah, you know, so well, that they could gonna, ideally gonna, go I'm there gonna, rather than a medical doctor because the medical doctor's would, way of treating things is not very good. No, no, I, and, and David, David, you know, I'm going to go into this more since you bring it up, and I and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for, uh, uh, you know, sharing a bit of your of your process with us. Thank you. Can I uh, tell everybody this that the. Um, I am a, a, a holistic therapist. I have 16 years of clinical practice. Uh, I have more than one lifetimes of study on the subject of wellness. I have 23 degrees in different uh, therapeutic techniques, including being a paramedic in the military. So why not? Why not? I, I, I'm really qualified when I can say that after research into other clinical practices, as well as my own experience, that the best way to deal with a heart attack is to not fall down, but to put one foot in front of the other and walk faster and break into a run as quickly as you can, and then run 
until the heart stabilizes and you just feel exhausted as opposed to having the heart attack. This actually pumps the blood through your body. It doesn't matter if your heart stopped. You actually would be able to continue running as long as you did continue running because you're pumping the blood using the body as a heart muscle instead of relying on the heart to do it. You're also increasing your chi energy and uh, increasing the electromagnetic stimulus that causes your heart to beat in any case, as well as pumping your entire endocrine system, which will stabilize that same rhythm. Okay. Okay, yeah. So so I appreciate that information. I think that information is very helpful for people, and I'm going to go into that. And, and I once again, I want to thank you, uh, you know, for... For, for letting us know. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm going to hang up. All right. Ah, so David David brings up a really good uh, uh, situation. Um, first of all, yeah, go to a health care provider. If it's an acupuncturist that you're comfortable with, then go there. If it's a medical doctor that you're comfortable with, then go there. Seriously, folks. If you feel that you have a medical condition, even though it may be kundalini-induced, go and, and, and go to a health care practitioner, whether it's an ER or an acupuncturist or, you know, a shaman, you know, go to the sources of of care that you feel uh, are the are the are the, have the best for you. Now, with what David David mentioned that he had, you know, four heart attacks, and, and you know, often the kundalini will, will will engender a cardiac event in a person, not a heart attack per se, but extreme uh, extremely high heart rate can occur. Extremely high blood pressure can occur. Extremely low heart rates can occur. Extremely low blood pressure can occur. Uh, once again, this is a this is a korea of the physical system that is expanding the spectrum of of what the human can have. And and I like. Uh, uh, what David had to say about running. Uh, often I will counsel people to get out there and do some hard work during their Kriya phenomena stage. Get out and, and get the cardiovascular system pumping. Do not treat this by lying down on the couch. And, and, I, re, and I respect David's experience in being a paramedic and, and all the other different degrees that he has uh, with that, I don't know him personally. This is the first time I've uh, uh, interacted on a verbal level with him. Uh, but but I support what he says uh, as far as getting out there and just starting to walk and then maybe jog and then maybe break into a run. Is what you do is, is you're 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 augmenting what the Kundalini wants you to do. The Kundalini doesn't want you to lay down and have a heart attack. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, it wants you to to respond to that increased heart rate, and and you know these these, these cardiac events, you know, not everybody's going to have them. I got I have to reiterate that not everybody's going to to have four heart attacks like David did. Many people will not have anything like that. Okay, so once again, this is individual. But if you do have something like what what David described. Uh, don't panic, as he said. Don't panic. Don't go into fear. Find a healthcare practitioner uh, of, a, of you know of your choice, you know, and what you feel it has the best for you. Um, I, I see that we we have another question here, uh, Amelia. No question. No other question says number she will press the number one if she has a question yes there's a oh, lady listening online yes yes <laughs> no, I just, I maybe like i go just, check maybe i go check with her because yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that okay so continuing yes the, the cardiovascular system will have creas the uh the endocrine system actually will also have creas 
the endocrine system, uh, all of a sudden you'll have uh, uh, less of a sex drive or you'll have more of a sex drive. Uh, you know, all the different systems in the human being, uh, the endocrine, the cardiovascular, the musculature, uh, all of these will go through uh, kundalini kriya phenomena. But once again, once once the kriya has done its job with the person, it stops. You know, once, okay. once you... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Chris, and the lady that was listening does have a question, so I'm going to push her through. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Okay. Hello, you're Hi. through now. Hi. I have a question. Hi. Who am I speaking with? Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Hello. So I, I've definitely had many Kundalini experiences, and I actually love it. And I think it's exciting and it's just uh, inspirational kind of, uh, you know, it moves through your body and creates a, a vast awareness. Also, but what I did experience um, last year was um, this person that does this energy, it's a workshop, and this I know it's geared to, like, working with the Kundalini, and what happened with me was I had um, this horrific experience. Um, it was uh, it lasted two months of the dark side, <laughs> feeling completely gloomy, and that's not my nature. I'm very optimistic, vigorous, and energetic person. And it was like a wet blanket being over me, and it was like not having enough support because it is such a unique experience. Not everyone can help you with that. So yeah, you have like, to be very careful who you who you look for support from. <laughs> right. And it, again and it's such a unique expression of who you know, just having spiritual support, emotional support and how to move through that realm of um darkness. I want you to have any questions on that or any comments. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh it sounds like uh you went through what I call a DNS. A dark night soul, and okay. uh, this, is, this is a very common uh, occurrence uh, with Kundalini, and a, a lot of it has to do with uh, the 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 ego based emotional detritus that can collect within a lifetime, uh, the the negative programming that we receive, the fear based entertainments that we partake of, the uh, the emotional traumas that we receive and some of those are associated with actual physical trauma but the dns uh is is a very first of all it, it is it is a a transient thing yours lasted two months for other people it can last you know a year or two and, mm-hmm. and, and are you are you i'm sorry no i was like uh-huh yeah and uh they you know often quite often will wind up in a in a psychiatric facility uh the the DNA, you have if you know that you're having a dark night soul it is so much better it is so much better because you know now that i know what you're saying yeah, now that i know this and that it were to happen again the awareness would be completely different than going in like completely oh, blindfolded yeah. you know but but part of the part of the point is for you to go in blindfolded. Okay. Uh, part 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 of the strengthening of your of your you know current awakening process is there because you went through the dark night soul. You had to have that. Yes. And so just as just as we you know when we exercise a muscle and it and it hurts us, I, you know, like for instance, I've been walking. You know, I'm doing like 20 miles. Uh, a week. I should probably be doing more of it. But the other, you know, the, the other week I did like 30, and oh my gosh, it was my leg. But I knew that it was only sore because the muscles weren't used to doing that. But it's the same thing with the dark night soul. Okay. You're dealing, okay. You're dealing with this issues of fear. You're dealing yes. with issues of of unknown. Like my God, this is so not like me. Yeah, how, I know. How it about. Uh, entity interaction as well, and right. uh, it's not not for everybody, but for 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 many people, you know, the entities choose that time to really 
really mess with a person's psychology. I got it. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're saying everything that I freaking already know, which is so great because it was like it used to get me just more. I mean, again, I and I wasn't supposed to know I'm going to have that experience, but coming on the other end, it did make me stronger and more aware and revealed a lot of stuff that was dormant and um, and even if I I'm sure, were to have that again, but, but now I know like how to manage myself better. So, oh yeah, I can I can tell from your voice that you're you're actually doing very well, very well. Thank you. Uh, and so, I feel great, and I feel like. Um, well, yeah, I really I like what you said at the beginning that that Kundalini is this awesomely, awesomely beautiful experience. It's so yeah. beautiful it hurts sometimes. Uh, it's like addiction. Uh, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> there is. <laughs> you're, you're addicted to your own evolution, so that's very cool. Totally. Uh, and, and thank you, thank you for bringing that up. That is, you know, yeah. the DNS, the DNS itself, so, Sophie, really is its own show. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Start, I, oh, oh, it, oh, it, it typically in the ancient world, uh, when a, when a person was having a, a dark night soul, uh, they had completed a level of study. Wow. They had completed a level of of study by the by the ancient people to prepare a person for a dark night soul uh, brought about by Kundalini. But here in the West, we don't have those that knowledge. We we're actually deprived of that knowledge because it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't uh, walk hand in hand with scientific inquiry. Okay. Wow! Is this so, your only show? So, I'm sorry. Is this your only show on um, Wednesdays? Uh, I do. I, yeah, I guess it is. Every Wednesday I do a show. Yeah. It's awesome. I want to continue to listen to your show. It's very insightful and I definitely love to learn different things. Well, well, I want to thank you, uh, Sophie, for calling in. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and talk a little bit more about, uh, about the DNN because awesome. you brought it up. And, thank you. And, uh, yeah, Dan, thank you. Thank you for calling. Awesome. Have a great day. Uh, so, so the DNS, dark night soul. This comes after the kriyas. The kriyas have kind of come and gone. The uh, the entity stage has kind of come and gone, but it may still be hanging on a little bit. The the dark night soul is a is a level of crumbling the person's current understanding of life understanding of a, of emotional balance, understanding of, you know, what is actually out there as far as creation is concerned. It really rips the veil away from you. You know, the veil being, you know, the world is, is, uh, is supported by a five-sense paradigm. Uh, the DNS crumbles that reality and opens you to areas of, of introspection and experience that that contradict uh, some of the some of the very uh, uh, um, foundations of what a p- person considers their reality to be, especially here in the West. So, so with with that understanding, uh, for those of you that have Kundalini uh, and say you're in, in the uh, say within the first year of it. Uh, you know, don't worry about the DNS. The DNS will come. And yes, you may, you may have to revisit some of the things that you've been repressed. As, as Sophie mentioned, the, uh, some of the, some of the, uh, some things that a person represses will come up once again to be dealt with. Your fears can come up once again to be dealt with. Uh, it is not anything to run away from. And you can't. You can't run away from it. You can't run away from a DNS any more than you can run away from the absolute sheer joy, beauty, love, ecstasy, and happiness that the Kundalini brings to you. And once again, you know, if we look at it from a perspective of a Kriya, a DNS is a like a, a grand Kriya, a Kriya that involves all of the, the other different Kriyas at the same time. 
you know, and works it into a a a time of testing for the individual. Time to test these new evolved uh, uh, aspects of this human being. Okay, so the Kundalini looks at Sophie. Okay, well, Sophie's reached this level of evolution. She's doing very well. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and, and and put her to the test. And so, boom, DNS is given, and 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 you know, and she struggles with it. She struggles and struggles for for as she said, two months. You know, and, and she and, and she correctly sought out support for her, you know, for her emotionally and, and all the in other all the other areas. And and she's come out of it and, and did you hear the confidence and the competency inside of her voice? I did. I did. So once again, Sophie, I I, I tip my hat to you and, and I and I congratulate you for for processing that dark night soul in such a positive way. And I suggest that all of you, all of you can process uh, this type of a grand Kriya that way. Uh, be- before I run out of time here, uh, I'm going to, to, to say to people once again, I apologize for Blog Talk Radio uh, having its Kriya. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully it won't happen next week. Um, I will be doing a show just on the Dark Knight Soul. If you have any questions about Kundalini Kriyas at all, please uh, uh, you can you can reach me on Facebook at Chrisum.Kundalini on Facebook. Uh, you can join uh, the uh, Kundalini Awakening or Kundalini Awakening Systems One or Kundalini Ashram here on Facebook. Or you can join Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot at, at Yahoo Groups dot com. So we have a we have a very uh, an excellent Yahoo group as well. You can also contact me privately at K Fire for All at Yahoo dot com. That's all one word K F I R E F O R A L L at Yahoo dot com. Or and you can also uh, collect some of this information at the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website and I would like to thank uh uh Glenn for setting that up and maintaining that website. Uh, thank you, Glenn. I'll be having a retreat uh in uh April at Lake Tahoe and uh this will be a uh what Centara has called a residential Retreat, where uh, uh, we we will gather with people who are interested in Kundalini, interested in learning about it, interested in activating it, uh, and also uh, gaining information inside of a current awakening. Uh, we will be there in in Lake Tahoe uh, in April, and um, uh, please uh, please look at. Uh, the Blog Talk Radio site for this, or the Facebook site, or the or the uh, Yahoo site for more information on that. If you if you are interested in attending this retreat, uh, please email Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com, uh, and Centara will come back to you uh, with any information. Is that right, Centara? That's right. That's right, Chris. And Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I have about two minutes left, and uh, the next uh, show is going to be on entities, uh, because like the Kriyas, it is a very life-changing subject within the Kundalini to hear your voice called or to, to see a, a a phantom, you know, talking to you or walking into your kid's room or something like that. Uh, Things that only occur to things that only occur to a person uh, outside of the five uh, sense paradigm. I would like to thank David uh, for calling and offering his absolutely excellent information, and as well as Sophie for calling and and, and offering her absolutely excellent information. Both of you, uh, thank you very much for calling in. I would like to thank uh, Centara. 
uh, Aaron Centaro for, for her help. And I'd like to uh, thank Eileen Morrow for her help as well. And uh, uh, I'd like to say hello to all of the people listening on the archives. Uh, I, I know you, I love you, and I always will. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, for those of you that are listening on the archives, please feel free to contact me, and I will get back to you, and uh, we can we can establish a communication based on whatever question you may have. Uh, so once again, everyone, thank you for listening. I apologize for Blog Talk Radio, but uh, we will go ahead and leave this as an archive. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, goodbye, my everybody. goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. To another person, say, Kundalini in me, I cannot be crying during work or when I'm getting the kids ready to go to school. I will give you the rest of the day to do this and my nights to do this, but when I am at work or when I'm dealing with my family, please allow me to finish those tasks first and then then I, I completely surrender to this transformation that you're giving to me. This is a very, very, very real agreement, and the kundalini typically will keep its end of the bargain. So you must keep your end of the bargain. Okay. Uh, these kriyas will come, and, and I don't know anybody that has a job. Well, there are some people that have jobs that, you know, it's okay to have kriyas during that work, but for the most part, for the majority of the population, whether you're a, a, an English teacher or a massage therapist or a, a, a waiter, a driver, a manager, an owner of a company, an airline pilot, you know, any of the, of the many different vocations that, that, that we as humans partake of, most of them will not make room for Krius to occur. And so it's very, very important that you begin right off the bat to have that conversation with your kundalini. Treat it like an individual because it is an individual within you. It is a divine consciousness within you. And the agenda of this divine consciousness within you, the seed of divinity within you, is to transform your body into a, the, the flesh made divine, into a divine a uh, human being, uh, as, as another uh, person put it, uh, homo luminosus, okay, the, the humanity of light. So I really, really encourage you to develop that, uh, that uh, communication with the kundalini. It's very, very important. Uh, for your process during these kriyas. These kriyas, uh, for the most part, will last about four months. But as I said, everybody is different. You know, I'm just looking at the averages uh, for people that are having kriyas. I, I know one person that's been having kriyas for years. I know another person that just had a very few amount of kriyas, and they, and they went, you know, into the next phase of, of kundalini expression. So, the, you know, how long this manifests for you, once again, will depend upon your karma and also your levels of resistance. If you keep resisting the Kriyas, the Kriyas will stay longer. The, the, the greater your surrender or your agreement uh, to having the Kriyas come through you, uh, they will pass as, as, they, as quickly as they should pass through your system, Okay. Uh, so, so realize that the Kriya phenomena can be transient for you. You don't have to worry about, oh, my God, I'm going to have these spontaneous movements for the rest of my life. That's not going to work. This is not for the rest of your life. This is for, you know, often, you know, I'll say four months to six months of Kriya activity. And some of it can be quite severe, uh, I have videos of people having kriyas, and and it looks quite strange to the uneducated onlooker. It, it really does. And uh, if you are having kundalini, and if you are having uh, the kriya phenomena, 
if you have a spouse, I will definitely ask you to let the spouse listen to this to this program. Uh, they need to know that they don't need to dial 911 or any emergency service, uh, that nothing is wrong with you, the person having the Kriyas. It is, it is just a phase that a person goes through during the Kundalini awakening process. And yet, this phase, you know, when, when, a, when an average person looks at it and goes, oh, my gosh, they're having seizures on the floor, call 911. This happens a lot. This, this is very common. And I, you know, part of the reason I wanted to have this show, and I might, I might want to cover some more of this next week because it's very important that people know this is not an emergency situation. Once again, you will not swallow your tongue. You are not having a seizure. Okay, you will not hyperventilate unless you do it from fear. And what I'm telling you is, there is no need to fear this. This is not a disease. You're not having a neurological trauma at all. As a matter of fact, you're probably in a very healthy physical state to even have the grace of the kundalini come to you body and into the psychological body. The spiritual body, it really won't do too much with. Okay? And I have to say that uh, here at this place where I'm broadcasting from is an, is an animal rescue and uh, you'll hear, you know, some of the birds and some of the some of the uh, fellow mortals that uh, have been rescued and are being taken care of here at uh, at the place where I'm broadcasting from in Santa Rosa. So if you hear that in the background, which I assume you do, that that would be Niki, a cockatoo from Australia. Anyway, so as as the kriya occurs upon the system. The human body, the physical body, will respond to it uh, by by ways of going into to certain yoga positions, and it doesn't have to necessarily be of a yoga, you know, a certain type of yoga. But I will suggest to you that that all yogas emanate from people observing other people having kundalini kriyas, and so. With that in mind, you can re, you can kind of see the source of of yoga on this world. Kundalini comes into the body and it will twist and torque the body into very specific positions. It will force the person to hold that position, whether they are conscious in their body or not. And I mention that because it, many of these kriyas will happen while a person is sleeping. They will wake up next to their spouse in bed uh, inside of a yoga position having never been introduced to yoga. And this will happen over and over and over and over. And even in their, in their waking conscious moments, they will find themselves assuming certain yogic positions. And you'll see a lot of these positions uh, repeated in the kundalini yoga format. Um, They'll wake up and they'll, or, or, or they'll just be compelled to assume a certain yoga position and hold it and breathe. And if they resist it or try not to do it, uh, it can be painful. And so, as you don't resist and as you as you surrender to this to this compelling force within you, you know, it feels very good. It feels uh, quite blissful, in, in fact. And so. Many of these positions also don't resemble yoga. Sometimes a person is shaking. Their hands are shaking or their legs are shaking or their their body is torqued one way or the other in a very, very uh, strong and almost mechanical way. And once again, you just want to, to realize this is a kundalini kriya. Nothing is wrong. You are not having a convulsion. You are not having a seizure. You are not going to bite your tongue or swallow your tongue. This is not a medical condition. I want to be very clear with that. This is not a medical condition, but anybody seeing it without knowing what's going on will assume that it is a medical condition. And uh, 
you know they will they will seek out the various uh, treatments that the uh, medical community has to to give, and, and typically an anti seizure medication, which you don't need. All you need to do is to match your symptoms of Kundalini awakening. Uh, with the many, many, uh, you know, certainly on the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com site, you know, we have a list of, of symptoms that a person can can access and compare their symptoms to, to to realize that oh yes indeed I'm having a Kundalini experience and therefore these positions that I find myself in these Kundalini kriyas that are coming to me are natural to me and they and and it's helping me, and it, this is helpful. This is a good thing. And it is a good thing, and it is a transient thing, typically. Not all the time. For some people, their karma or their development requires that the kundalini kriyas last longer. And for some people, it, it requires them to to have it for a very long period of time to the point where the kriya itself goes from an actual physical uh, positioning, automatic positioning, to an energetic electrical force within the body. And I've had these. And these will literally propel you across the room. So, for instance, you'll be sitting in a chair, you'll be doing some meditation, and all of a sudden you get kind of touched with about a 10,000-volt feeling uh, you know, at the base of your spine or on your back, and and your muscles will contract so hard that it can it can literally toss you across the room, and and uh, it, this is quite surprising. It does not damage you. It does not damage you, and it isn't electricity per se, even though it feels like electricity. These are these are referred to, not surprisingly, as electrical kriyas. But they are they are not so much electrical, even though they they have that feeling on the body. The kriyas come to a person uh, in order to spread the cellular transformation upon the person through the kundalini. So the kundalini energy comes into every cell of the body, and yet it does it in such a pattern and such a way. Uh, that first of all, the pattern and the way will be unique to the individual. The pattern and the way will follow uh, levels of karma that the person uh, having this is is subjected to. And so each person's path within the Kriya phenomena will be different. So for instance, if, uh, if, if person A is having Kriyas where the, where the legs uh, cross each other and... and, and Hyperflex the ankle. Well, person B will have, uh, you know, back arches occurring. Okay, so this is what I mean. It, 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 the pathway of the kriya in an individual is different. And within that context, I want you to understand that everybody is different within the kundalini. And as you have your kundalini, uh, as you initiate your kundalini journey, don't, don't. Tr- Try to be. You don't ex- have the expectation that your journey is going to be exactly the same as somebody else's because it will not. Everybody comes to this table with different karma and different karmic requirements, and those kriyas will ref- will reflect uh, those differences in karma. So as 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 these kriyas come through the body and you start assuming different positions, you'll notice that your your forefinger and your tip and your thumb tip will come into the Gyan Mudra quite often. You'll notice that your tongue tip will go up behind the upper front teeth. Uh, you'll notice that your eyes will want to go up, 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 uh, almost to the point where only the whites of your eyes are showing. You'll find yourself breathing in different patterns of breathing. You'll find yourself, uh, once again, assuming different uh, physical positions. Uh, Shaking sometimes is normal. This is all normal stuff. Uh, Assuming yoga positions, normal things. Um, Don't be afraid when this occurs. I want to reiterate, nothing is wrong with you. This is natural. It is part of the kundalini process upon your system, upon your physical system. At the same time, 
that your body goes through the different physical contortions uh, and positioning uh, from a physical kriya, your emotional body will also be going through its different positions of a kundalini nature. So with the emotional body, your mood swings can become extremely enhanced. Okay, you'll go from happy to sad for absolutely no reason. You'll go from happy to sad to dull to the to the various positions of of uh, emotional gradation that your emotional spectrum gives for you to pull from. So happy, sad, angry, joyful, loving. All of the different issues of an emotional quality can be brought to the surface during these emotional kriyas. Uh, you'll be crying for absolutely no reason. And as I've discussed in some of the other broadcasts, crying is a natural uh, event within a kundalini awakening. Crying is a release valve for tremendous amounts of energy flowing through the person. So let yourself cry. Let yourself cry. Weep copiously. Let the tears flow. It is absolutely crucial that you allow yourself to do this. Uh, do not let your ego interfere with these tears. Now, I understand that you have to go to work. You have to, to you know, have a, a, a normal, uh, consistent uh, um, attitude with your children and with your family and with other people that may not be having the kundalini and may not understand why all of a sudden mommy or daddy or brother or sister are, are weeping copious amounts of tears. And in that scenario, I want you to communicate with your kundalini as if you're communicating. Love Talk Radio. Uh, kundalini, once again, for those who are just joining us and who may not be familiar with the kundalini itself, is an energetic... Uh, stream of energy that is intelligent. It has its own consciousness. And it resides in the last three vertebrae of the, of the tailbone in the human being. When it is awakened, this energetic consciousness will, will erupt from that tailbone area into the lower spine and, and stream up the spine exiting out the top of the head as as one would see a fountain. So uh, you can kind of see the human spine as being a a fountain, you know, and the and the source of that energetic fountain is down there at the uh, last three vertebrae, the tailbone, and it extends. You know, these these activation points extend down to the soles of the feet, pulling energy from the earth. When this occurs, uh, a person's neurosystem, physical neurosystem, can go into a very strong convulsion, and the back can arch, and and various uh, uh, fantastic phenomena can be experienced. Everything from visions to to clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, uh, oneness with all creation, oneness with God. Uh, this is an extreme event, and uh, this is the gateway towards a new, a new evolutionary point within the human being. And, and, and our bodies are wired to have this. This is natural to our human system. You know, even though our science at this point does not understand it, it is still natural to our system, and science will eventually catch up to this. Uh, you know, and hopefully, you know, we're adding to to that possibility or to that probability with these broadcasts. As the energy uh, makes its way uh, up the spine and out the fontanelle at the top of the head, it's also yes, yes. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisum, and I would like to thank uh, David. Uh, and David, this is David Sullivan. I would like to, to thank him for making us aware that uh, Blog Talk Radio is having difficulties. 
So here we go. When the Kundalini is awakened in a person or activated in a person, uh, the Kundalini is, is a very, very powerful source of energy that is located uh, in, a, in a triangle, basically between the, 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 the bottoms of the feet, the chakras on the foot, and the last three vertebrae in the tailbone. Uh, this is uh, this has been symbolized by the ancients as a serpent wrapped three and a half times around an egg, and this egg and this serpent would be at the uh, within the last three vertebrae of the tailbone in the human being. When this is activated and awakened, the Kundalini shoots up the spine as an energetic force shooting up the spine, and it emits out the top of the head. Uh, where the fontanelle is, and, and surprisingly enough, it it literally fountains out of the fontanelle of the human being. And as this occurs, you know, a whole new level of energetic interaction uh, occurs upon the body. And the and during this type of a spinal sweep of energy, the uh, you know the muscles will con- will respond to this, and you'll have many different contractions and and many different movements uh, during this this initial event. Uh, your you know the back will arch and and uh, the legs will will shake and 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 sometimes twist and and it's not painful at all. It actually feels very very good. It it, it is beyond good, and it's beyond I think what human beings can can. Uh, process using words as a communication form. It's, it's beyond words. So as this occurs, uh, a whole system of trans, transformation is being given uh, into the person. And part of this transformation, one aspect of it, is the Kriya phenomena. And this Kriya phenomena is the infusion of the energetic Kundalini upon the neural systems and the muscular systems and all of the motor systems of the human body. Uh, but it also goes beyond the human body. It goes straight into the emotional body and into the mental body. So once again, this is not an emergency medical situation. Now, if you want to go to the ER, then I suggest you do. You go to the ER and they will give you the anti- uh, you know the the, the medications that that uh, keep you from going into seizures, the anti seizure medication. Uh, typically, it will be quite strong, and you'll be in zombie land for a while. Um, but what I am suggesting to you, and to those of you that are having creas and may be in zombie land, I will suggest that you don't need uh, an- anti spasmodics or anti seizure medication. You're not having seizures. You're not having petty mal or grand mal seizures. This this is part of the kundalini awakening process. So once again, you're going to need to match up your symptoms with the symptoms of kundalini awakening. Find a healthcare provider that knows about kundalini. They're not common, I have to admit. Uh, most, you know, 95, 99% of the medical staff do not know what kundalini is, and therefore they have no other reference for it other than, than, you know, seizures. And so they will treat you to the best of their ability for seizures. And so, you know, kind of be advised. Uh, look on the web and, and don't just depend on my information. I'm one person. Go look at other information and, and, and see what feels right for you. I am going to suggest for those of you that have kundalini phenomena, well, you have kundalini activated or awakened within your bodies. And that, you know, from four to six months of a typical uh, journey through the, the kundalini plat- platform of kriyas, you will have automatic, spontaneous uh, positioning of your physical body and your emotional body without your permission. You don't get to have choice in this. Kundalini takes over that choice unless you talk with it, unless you you develop that bond of communication, which is easy. That is as easy as talking to someone on the telephone or talking to yourself. And, And 
you know, I, I don't suggest you go around telling people, yeah, I'm having a conversation with my kundalini to, you know, slow down the, the kriya activity, unless those people that you're talking with know about kundalini, know that, you know, they're, there's nothing that needs to be cured. You don't need to go to a healer. You don't need to go to an acupuncturist. You don't need to go to a to any kind of a health care provider. You need to just let it take its course. Let it take its course. Don't resist it. Don't feel that you're sick. You're not sick. You know, and allow it to take its course. It will it will disappear, you know, four to six months typically disappears. If it lasts longer, nothing is wrong. It just means that your personal process requires your kriyas to last longer. I've known people, as I mentioned before, that have had kriyas for years and years. And one guy is having them for eight years, and these are the electrical kriyas. And that can be quite disruptive. The emotional kriyas can last longer than the uh, the automatic uh, uh, positioning kriyas uh, with the physical body. So, you know, you're, you're not having a psychological problem. You don't need to see a therapist. But if you want to, go see a therapist. You know, go, go see what helps you to become uh, at ease with this, to, to reduce the levels of fear that you have about this. Um, you know, I'm open to, to any of you uh, talking about these kundalini kriyas. I, you know, I don't want you to suffer with fear. Most of this uh, kriya phenomena is terrifying because your choice has been, has been abrogated. Your choice has been taken away. And it's been taken away by an unknown force within you. And we typically will go into a fear a fear zone when we when our choice is taken away by an unknown force that's typically you know that's what diseases do they they force themselves on you and they take away your choice of of good health well this is not occurring a disease is not occurring with this you are not diseased you are actually being blessed with the kundalini and as you go through the different uh, body positionings that uh, that the kundalini brings to you, including the shaking and the twitching and the the you know the eyes going up and the tongue going up and the fingers going into different mudras and standing on one foot and stretching out your legs this way and that, 